<laughs> Steve, you're you're on that camera there. See that one? I do. And that one there. Look up there. <laughs> there's, probably, there's probably a few more in this room. Oh yeah. Can you believe it? Thank you. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah. All right, look. It's it's all Steve Mitchell all the time. We got Steve here. We got real we got real Steve here. So how do we tell the difference? What's that now? What's a couple of questions? Well, from what I understand, few people get really bored with the real Steve. Maybe Steve's wife. Just, just ask her. Yeah. Right. There you go. Oh, I haven't met Mrs. Mitchell. Oh, yeah. Rita. Hi, Rita. Hi. How do you nice to meet you. Yeah, finally. I'm the one that keeps your husband awake at night, talking on the yes. phone. And... Oh, I hear the laughter. Do you? Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, for those of you that uh, don't know me, I'm Marty. I'm Steve's friend. Hi, it's right on my name tag. <laughs> Steve's friend. <laughs> and uh, Steve Mitchell and I have been buddies for about uh, almost a decade. Yeah, almost. Started out... Uh, YouTube in a little bit before Steve joined YouTube. I like to tell people, I knew Steve when he had 50 subscribers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was one of the first and uh, an early adopter of the Mitchell. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Reese, the whole thing, the whole bit. Yeah, I commented I on your channel. Yes, you did. Looking for somebody to talk to because yes. like, nobody knew me on YouTube. Yeah, we were all like uh, lonely basement dwelling <laughs> watercolorists. <you know. laughs> Mild mannered St. Paul and uh, South Carolina. That's right. And so somehow the universe brought us together, and Steve and I have done a number of collaborations mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, and then uh, just fortuitously, uh, Darren and Scott and I, Darren owns Wet Paint, and there's a number of great staff here. But we were talking one day about watercolors, and I mentioned Steve, uh, and I was a huge, you know, how big a fan I was. And Darren said, oh yes, uh, Mind Watercolor Channel, and lo and behold, you've had a couple of collaborations with Wet Paint now. Yes. So let's let's talk about uh, the very first one. What, what, what was it? It was Daniel Smith. It was a Daniel Smith pan set. Yeah. Right. And that year, because I go to the corporate Daniel Smith site and look at their public, uh, they publish their revenue for the quarter. Uh, Steve Mitchell, uh, prior to Steve Mitchell quarter, <laughs> Steve Mitchell quarter, <laughs> that's, they're like EBITDA was we just call it the Mitchell effect. Yeah. So he sold out of all the palettes that only. time. Yeah. If, so if they only. sold out of all the watercolor palettes, yeah, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. Did. That was a great experiment, right? Was there. Great experiment. <laughs> right. They that was sold awesome. out in like a day or two. <laughs> that was right in the middle of the pandemic. They did. Yeah. Know yeah. What was going to happen? They yeah. landed kind of uh, square in the middle of May last year. Yeah. yeah I think we had 300 come in. Yeah. Yeah, and that was that was just fun. <laughs> yeah, and, and for those of you watching the video, either live or later, uh, more than likely later because I'm recording. Yeah. Uh, that Steve, um, Steve actually uh, was it. We weren't too sure at first, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was like, and Daniel Smith. I mean, shh. Yeah. Not your number one watercolor on your list, but close. It but is. Close. It yeah. is. It's close uh, to your top. You know. I, I can get I can get next to Daniel Smith. It's, right. it's an okay it's an okay paint. They sure have a lot of colors, but no, that was a great that was a great exercise, if nothing else, just to be able to pick those colors and you know. and that was three. Uh, I, I don't know whatever it was. It was months in the making, and yeah. then, and yeah. then Daniel Smith came out and introduced like a uh, a not so great and not, you know it's not a secret a not so great uh, plastic palette yeah came out and uh, you know Steve and I reviewed that palette and you know I, to their credit they listened to the feedback and went with a, a nice produced a better metal palette yeah. which is what everybody was asking for so kudos to uh, Daniel so in that respect the, the delays were worth it because I'd much rather be in that palette than the plastic thing like and I called them, and first I, I was like, hey, could you guys upgrade the palette? And they're like, who is this? And I said, I said this is Steve Mitchell. This is and they Steve's said, right away. This is Steve's uh, right away, Mr. Mitchell. This is Steve's right away. Oh, who's Steve? They upgraded yeah. the palette like the next day. <laughs> no. And then, and then uh, Steve and Darren uh, continue to have conversations. And I think, Darren, somehow you found out that, uh, probably by watching the videos, that Steve's favorite watercolor is M. Graham. 
Well, we, we traded emails. And I said, if I ever did this again, here's who I'd really like to do it with. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Which is awesome. And, and he now, had the perfect contact. We made some introductions. Yeah. And now, yeah. I, I was wondering why it was dark in this room, and I just figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. I no, I, I was going to say something. I, was, I wish you would. <laughs> <laughs> but Steve and I, uh, we, we, we have done six or seven videos together. Mm -hmm. We've interviewed famous to not so famous artist right. James Gurney James Gurney man that was a master stroke on your part well that was because you told me about James Gurney yeah. I had no idea who he well, was I, I would have been like I don't think I can ask James Gurney for an interview <laughs> Well, he, you know, I called him up. He said, I said, do you put your pants on the same way we do? And he said, yes, yes, I do. So anyway, we called James Gurney up one day, and he said, hey, would you, would you do an interview with me? And, and again, he's like, who is this? And I said, I'm a friend of Steve's. And he said, yes, I'll, I'll do it. So then we got to get some new stories. He later. actually, he actually knew who Steve was, though. He knew, he knew who you were. Okay. And he had seen your videos, and he said he was a big fan. And I said, well, great. And so. A couple of weeks later, we interviewed uh, James Gurney, which was a great interview. It's up on Steve's channel. You can find that. Uh, if you don't know who James Gurney is, he's uh, famous for Dinotopia mm -hmm. and, a, and a really good book on watercolor called uh, what was it? Color, Light, and Light. Color and Light, yeah. Yeah, which Steve has reviewed a number of times on his channel. And on his uh, channel, he does mostly plein air location painting. Fantastic. I mean, there's no subject he won't try to paint. So really great. Really great. So, a uh, show of hands, how many people have seen uh, some of Steve's uh, plein air videos? Have you seen those? Where he goes out and he does some? There's one where you visited, uh, what, what was the name of that place? You know the video that I always tell you about, it's so good. The one where you uh, went down to the, is it a host historical? Oh, yeah, Charleston? Charleston. Yeah. You went down to Charleston. Oh, no. and, and did that, yeah. and, and everything about that video, from your process to to the to the subject matter you picked, I think that's a, an informative video for anybody that's worried or a little bit trepidatious about going out and doing a little plein air. Yeah, that painting. was that was an early one, I think. Yeah. It's the one I think you're talking about. I've been actually been a couple times. That wasn't when the peacock was coming after you. No, I, I think it was the early. It was an earlier one than that. So, yeah. <laughs> but I think you uh, you might have gone. She might have gone with you. Yeah, she was there. The, the first one, it was actually a birthday trip. So that I requested it for my birthday. I think we did a like an old inn. Right. And then we did a church. And then I think that was it. it was mainly those two. So, yeah, and that's a yeah. great video if you if you want to go see how to kind of break the uh, barrier between your fear about being out there and just going out there. Yeah, you know, because it was one of the first times yeah. that I was going to spend that much time out, you know, on location doing things. So right. I was still trying to work out my process. Yeah. And I mentioned that a lot in that video. You did. So I think it's what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly what I'm talking about. And you don't have to be uh, a great artist to want to go out and do some plein air work and just represent what you see. Yeah. Steve does that, and uh, I do that. And of course, James Gurney uh, is very he's famous a, for doing he's that. He's a master at it. He, he, he puts on, what, what is it he puts on to, to look official? Oh, he but, puts but on the art department. He's got, he's art got department. a patch that says art department. Yeah. And, uh, and he sent me uh, the patches after our interview and a nice... Did he really? Yeah, he said, because I mentioned them in the video, so he's really a sweetheart. And, and once in a while, he'll he'll sell those on his website. Yeah, he'll go into a grocery store and paint a fruit section while his wife is getting groceries. And yeah, he'll, he'll like... Oh yeah, they all take cones, won't yep. they? Like orange yep. cones? That's right. Set them places. Right around him. So people <laughs> think he's official. And he's wearing the uh, uniform. It says the art department. And then it says James over here. So nobody even bothers him. Yeah, great. <laughs> Not, Not even employees out. bother him. Where so. should I back the truck up? <laughs> you <gotta stop> it. <laughs> but Steve, uh, so let's see some behind the stuff. We always like to dish or talk dirt here. Uh, so some stuff that Steve doesn't want anybody to know uh, about him. Well, actually, there's not much. But uh, we have lots of great talks about whatever fuels art. Uh, life, uh, love, passion, kids, mm -hmm. family, nature. Whatever fuels art, uh, Steve and I, uh, we, there's no subject we haven't 
yeah. at least touched on. Yeah. 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 So it's been good. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, and uh, we we interviewed Denise Snowden. Uh, Snowden, right? And right? Liquid Color. Liquid Color. Yeah. Uh, who else have we? Uh, uh, let's see. Mark Campbell. Mark Campbell. Very good. Uh, Eve Bolt. Eve Bolt is just fantastic. Yeah. Really nice lady. Who else? These are all YouTube like uh, influencers or people yeah. that are artists that do YouTube videos that Steve and I, mm -hmm. luckily enough, we stumble on them or they stumble right. on us and they. Leave. Mostly it's just it's just been you and I chewing the fat about yeah. art supplies or art process. Um, Those are like sketchbooking. That was I enjoyed that. Sketchbooking was fun. As a sketchbook as an art form in and of itself. That might be one of our more recent ones. Yeah, it is. It's, I think the last one you and I did. So if you have ideas that you think would be good for Steve and I to talk about, or you want to talk about any of that here today, let us know. We'll one of the questions. gentlemen that was here, he's not here now, said that he'd like to see more of that. Sketch from us, no from us. Oh, just collaboration. Me. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. yeah I see good. heads going. Well, Ooh. that's good. <laughs> that's pretty fun. <laughs> you're a little, you're iffy on that? Yeah, well, we're, you know, it's kind of an acquired taste. Yeah. It's, it's not, not for everybody. Pretty much the videos that we enjoy doing are, I think, the, the most are talking about you know, just whatever it is. It's nice to have people live in the chat. Yeah. They, they've asked us a, a, a Val will moderate for us. Well, I, what I love about Marty and Hart is he's a purist. He, he doesn't have to have or art. He doesn't have to have a YouTube channel. He's got a full-time job. In fact, I imagine there are a lot of days you come home <clears throat> dead tired and art's the last thing you want to do. Maybe, but uh, he still goes at it. I mean, he's posting sketchbook stuff all the time. You inspire me all the time on Instagram thinking, <laughs> He can do that. I'm doing this professionally. I ought to be able to do this. You know, it's like what? You You're know, kidding me? No. Get no, out I. Here. I mean, get out of here. Motivation. Please. It's not. It's not. That's not right. I look at your stuff and I go, I'd have to paint for 50 more lifetimes. <laughs> I'm talking about motivation. A motivation. Yeah. Okay, I got. You. All right. Well, that's fair. But that's I love your stuff fair. anyway. So it's. I. It's like. Okay. You know. I need to pull out the sketchbook and well, you do, do a little more of that. So. You, you know what you did? But you're a pure artist. Well, you're not a professional. I mean, you're not doing it for professional purposes. No, I wish I could, but yeah. I'm not. I just didn't. You know, you you started out as a uh, a commercial artist. Yeah. A graphic yeah. design, and you moved into. Did you do commercial art? Yeah. For the, like 35 years. Right? 35 years. Yeah. yeah. And and. You, what's the the most fun thing is like you, you when you stop doing that you don't have somebody telling you what to create that's, just, ex that's right? exactly it that's exactly it it's uh, what got to me after all those years was the clients and they got worse not better uh, and the way their demands are what they expected you to do for this amount of money how they tried to dictate what they wanted versus trying to tap into your expertise. That quotient, you would think, as you gain experience in years, you go up, it didn't, it went down. I just had enough, you know, and in doing art for myself just uh, became much more fun. And I didn't realize how much I would enjoy teaching and making videos. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. Well, once you, so when you started out on YouTube, you were doing, like, you were demonstrating, doing some painting. Yeah. Um, you occasionally would pull up a brush and go, I kind of like this brush. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this brush. Mm -hmm. And it would be a brand of a brush or whatever mm -hmm. that we talked, that well, Steve would talk about. Mm -hmm. And then we, we sort of got together and realized we're using the same stuff. Mm -hmm. What we should do is we should set up like a, an exchange. Because I'm going broke buying all the stuff. And then you're buying the same stuff. And then we should just, I should just mail him stuff I've used and he can mail me stuff, stuff he's used. But then, but then wet paint stepped in and said, no, don't do that. So continue to individually buy stuff. But uh, we, we, we did, uh, we, I was watching your videos, listening to you talk about your commercial art career and how it progressed and where you were at then. 
-hmm. And you started out, you had a nice little following, and in, in the internet, on the internet, you, you know content is king. You, you win or lose by how good you, can, uh, you are at your talent, whether that is you know, reviewing cars or, uh, and whether or not you have a personality to deliver the content. And Steve would always, I'd always see these comments on it and say, Steve, we love you. You add some humor to the, to the mix. You, you're not, whereas I am oftentimes referred to as the NPR of our reviews. <laughs> I, I one time had a lady. And we I, need the NPR. Well, <laughs> I, I kid you not. I, I had, that's because I, right before I did that video, honestly, a lady called me up and said, do you know what ASRM, ASMR is, right? And I said, no, I have no idea what this is. And she said, well, your voice helps me go to sleep. And so sometimes I'll just turn your art videos on and I don't have to take any Oh, well, I've had that comment, too. Yeah, have you had yeah, yeah. that? And I said, I said, well, I, I appreciate that. And so right after that, I figured, well, I had to up my game. So I took uh, some paper, Legion paper, and I ran it over with a truck and a forklift, and I brought it to the car wash. And <laughs> that was a, so you, you watch that? That was such a great video. And then Steve called me up and said, "Hey, you, you, that paper's going to need counseling." <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that. That was good. That was a good video. Good. I'd like to take credit. But for you, that you uh, through that, you introduced me to the president, right? Yep. CEO Legion paper. Legion. Yeah, he called me up. Yeah, he said, he said, did you do that to my paper? I said, yes, yes, sir, I did. And it, it's sent great me a paper. stack of like this you many pads yeah. oh. to give away. I know, I know. Oh. You know, you know, for as much love as I give Schmincke, you know, and, and don't, don't I, don't I, Steve, yes. don't I love yes. them? Yes. Don't, yeah. don't I heed praise on the German yep. art supplies yep. and worship at the altar of Schmincke? Yeah. And, <laughs> have they sent me one yeah. damn half pan of watercolor? No. no. Never. Never. But the Legion paper guy yeah. is like backing a truck up to the house. Yeah. Right. Hey, you'll never have to buy paper again. That's exactly you know? right. But yeah, I, so you never know where the goodness is going to come from. That's exactly right. But uh, yeah, we, we, so Steve and I, yeah. we, we had some fun and we'd oftentimes collaborate and think about what, what could we do next? Yeah. What, what could we talk about next? And you reach a certain point where you've kind of saturated your ideas yeah. and you, you let them soak. And yeah, but I need your fearlessness because that's <laughs> your fearlessness is where it's, it's what's gotten us some of those fun well, things. You know, I, I think it's just a, a, a lack of understanding. <laughs> <laughs> it's more what it is because that because because when James Gurney called me back, yeah. he said, uh, "Yes, I understand you want to do an interview," and I said, uh, "Who is this?" <laughs> but, but anyway, Steve's friends. Steve's friends. Steve's friends. But Steve's no, it was all. It's all good, and uh, we've had a lot of fun over the years, and uh, looking forward to a lot more. I need to get out to South Carolina. I'm headed. My wife is a. Uh, is like a semi-professional off-road motorcyclist. So she, I film her and go around the country with her and film videos. And this fall, she's going to go ride the tail of the dragon in, uh, in North oh, Carolina, right? okay. at the okay. base of the Appalachians. Yeah. So I'll be close to your house. Cool. I'm bringing a tent, but I fully expect that you guys will put us up. <laughs> we will. We have lots of tent pitching space. <laughs> That's fair enough. Okay, fair enough. Cheaper than a campground. That's right. Art supplies yeah. half price. And half the mosquitoes. So. Yeah. Well, that that would be good. Yeah. Minnesota, they you haven't been here long enough, but they actually carry small children. Well, the mosquitoes. I've experienced that in her hometown. So. Oh, in Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. You're originally from Iowa. I am. I yeah. spent a week one day in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa's actually a beautiful place. They got bridges. They go to Madison County, yeah. or they're in Madison County. <laughs> the bluff country is very nice. So, so yeah. Steve and I, you know, Steve, it's good to see you. And it's great to see it's you. It's great to be with you and I. Our first face-to-face. -face yeah, we've been just been internet buddies. Yeah. Kind of like when people ask you, well, how did you fall in love? Well, we met over here. We met on an internet art site. It's not as creepy as it sounds like I'm saying it. It's sounding creepier yeah, now. I know. It's a, little, it's a little bit weird, but I do have uh, mad love for it. Yeah. It's Same here, good, buddy. It's been, Same good, here. it's been a good uh, past decade, but... Like, I did want to, you know, because you guys all showed up, we should 
answer questions or yeah. whatever you yeah. I know you asked Steve a lot of questions already. So. Oh, please, fire away if you have more. We're here, yes? Are you two what each other expected? You mean uh, in person? Yeah, we, yeah. I think so. We, I think he's know. a little better looking than I thought. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, I think so. Yeah, I mean, Steve and I, well. We've done a lot of phone calls. We've done, you know, the virtual lives and Zooms or whatever. FaceTime. I don't know, FaceTime kind of stuff. So It's like the Mind Shot. Have you ever watched the Mind Shot with Steve Mitchell? Mind Shot yeah. Blogs. Mind Shot Blogs. <laughs> yeah. It's like that, only with a friend. Yeah. yeah. And I ask a lot of questions. Yeah. And then Steve has to go to bed. <laughs> or his wife calls us for dinner. Steve? How does it feel to <laughs> Tell Marty to go home. <laughs> How does it feel to me for the first time instead of having the screen or that in front of you? Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, you know. It feels pretty normal. Yeah. <laughs> now I know he's real. Yeah, I, 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 I'm physically real. So I wasn't There's a lot sure. Of I wasn't sure. But yeah, uh, it's great. I was been hoping for a long time. Can you time. talk about that? Yeah, sure. Well, yeah. So we got a workshop coming up on Etcher. Etcher has three of my workshops already, a mini, sort of an extended, and then another uploaded one. Uh, this is a code you can use uh, on their educational website, which is now Etcher Studio. They recently changed it. You find tons on there. The mini workshops are only like six bucks. And there'll be a new one, I, I'm doing a free demo uh, next week, I think it's Thursday, but I'll, I'll have an announcement on the channel. They they have the announcement probably on their site. The free the the free demo is sort of a preview of what's coming in the mini workshop, which will be uh, three two to three weeks later, and then there'll be <clears throat> yet a third workshop, be the same basic. Uh, uh, subject matter or process only extended. That'll be a three hour. So it's like free, mini workshop, six bucks. I forget how much the three hour is. It's probably 60, 70 bucks, something like that. And that one you can actually participate face to face uh, on Zoom. So. Uh, Seems cheap, yeah, six pick, bucks. Pick up one of these if you want to. Yeah, the mini workshops uh, are cheap. Can you, Steve, can you talk about the history of Etcher? Oh, Paul yeah. Erwin Etcher, uh, these people have really impressed me. And this is the only place right now, I actually stopped planning and putting any workshops on Skillshare. Uh, when these guys started approaching me, the first product they put out was the satchel, the Etcher satchel, which was a plein air kit that you could put on a tripod to go out and paint in the wild. Uh, they they designed it, launched it from a Kickstarter. Uh, they sent me one just to review. I did. Uh, pretty soon they had another smaller one, and I mean, it, just from there they've they've taken off. They now have sketchbooks like the Perfect Sketchbook, uh, several different. They they have one of the only uh, cotton watercolor sketchbooks you can buy. Um, so it's 100 percent cotton. Yeah, 100 percent cotton paper. Um, they now have brushes, paints, you know, things like that. But the people are what have impressed me. They're just, it's an international company. They're not real well centrally located. So I've dealt with people from California, Por Portugal, Singapore, and Australia, all virtually. And they just keep growing by leaps and bounds. So and they have really expanded the educational workshop uh, site. So there's a lot of artists on there besides me. Where can they get more info? Links down Yeah, the pick up one of these. It says it's uh, etcherstudio.com. And if you're interested in buying one of the workshops, you'll have a code on here you can take. Oh, there's a stack. It says, it says free on there. Yeah. Seems well, so, yeah. Uh, seems good. Yeah, the mini <laughs> workshops are not, but the, they are live. There are live demos on there that are free. Lots of live demos. That, that it says free. join a workshop for free. But then once you join, you, no, I don't know what the <laughs> I don't know what the arrangement is, but it seems good. And their books are great. I yeah. have like uh, several of them. Matter of fact, you sent me some of the original Erwin Lee yeah, books, right. and I 
I, you know what? I, I just admit this in front of everybody, like they do at those meetings. Um, I'm Marty. I have a couple of sketchbooks. I've never opened them. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Very afraid to open the sketchbook. Only a couple. Well, a couple that I haven't yeah. opened. I'm afraid to open the Irwin. Lip. I've got about a half a dozen. Do well, I've opened them all. I haven't yeah, drawn any. I'm afraid. Oh, yeah. And then, and then the thing is, you get a really good sketchbook, and you do a really nice painting on the first page, and I'm like, I put that away because <laughs> everything I do afterwards is going to be horrible. <laughs> first. Do they first have spiral bound ones? Uh, Etcher doesn't. Okay. No. Uh, the there used to be. Uh, Windsor Newton used to make a spiral 100%. They might still. They still do. It's okay. the Windsor Newton Pro. I don't know. If, you carry Windsor Newton Pro? Okay. You don't have that. Okay. All right. Let's mention some ones that uh, wet paint does carry. <laughs> <laughs> they have some. Still, still in burn. They do have Etcher. Yeah, they do carry Etcher. Carry Stillman and Burn, which is. There you I've go. reviewed that paper many times. It's awesome. The books are great. Um, and another thing I'll say about that is if you're doing watercolor, it's great to have 100% cotton paper in, in the sketchbook, but listen, if you're doing gouache or casein or some of, you don't need 100% cotton wash. Or line, just Gurney line and wash. Use it. Just yeah. line and wash. Line and wash. You don't need 100% yeah. cotton paper. You can use Stillman a, a burns. cellulose. It's great for that. Yeah. Pulp uh, book. Uh, yeah. And also, if you really want to save money, uh, what are those ones, Darren, uh, that we have, the, the little... Uh, I can't remember the name of them, but they're the real inexpensive ones. Uh, I've, had, I've owned a few dozen of those. They're great. Uh, no, they're just the little sketchbooks over there. Some they're green and red and orange, and they all you know. Can't remember the name of them. Moleskin? Not moleskin. Uh, I'll find. Are they hard bound or soft? They're 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 soft bound, but they're bound. Yeah. Okay, Serena's gonna get it. Yeah, they're they're real nice. I've used those. I think they're they range from seventy pound to like ninety pound paper. Really good. So if you're looking to save a buck, and uh, yeah, well, what else, Steve? Oh, let's. Uh, I got a couple of plugs here. One, uh, the the palettes available here. The the this palette here. Yeah. The the M Graham. Yes. Are those all the colors you can make with that palette, Steve? Uh, yes. I, I'm a little yes. dubious. I think there's more. <laughs> I think there's more colors. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the color chart they made from those colors. Yeah. If you've ever seen it's Steve, one, one of the things that freaks me out about watching Steve's videos, and I mean freaks me out, is that he'll, my friend Larry calls it splorching. Uh, uh, what will happen is Steve will splorch some paint <laughs> yeah. or some water on a, on a sketchbook. And then it'll take a little paint and it'll touch the water. And whatever it does, that's a limb or a tree or a leaf. Yeah. And I'm like, how does he do that? <laughs> and, then, and there's purple bushes. And it's like, it's like an acid trip, man. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's unbelievable. And at the end of it, what, what, you, what you're left with is a beautiful, a beautiful painting like this. This is an example of exactly what I'm talking about. Well, that, I was telling a few people who I was talking to that, that Spontaneous painting process it has taught me more about the techniques of watercolor than just about anything I've done. And you have to do you have to do the the work too. You know you have to do the drawings and the planned watercolor. So I'm not saying spontaneous painting is is the way to go, but it's a great way to not put any pressure or expectations on yourself and just learn. Let watercolor teach you what it will do. Let it experiment. You know, and eventually, you know, it's like a, you know, musical duo. Because it just does what it wants anyway, right? Yeah, Water exactly. Is this one? Is this the fluid paper is fluid. excellent. Yeah. That's yeah. not quite what I was talking about, but that is a great it's a good uh, paper. alternative. Yeah, that's a good and paper. Doesn't fluid, Darren, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't, fluid makes 100% cotton as yes. well. Yep. Oh, yep. There it is. If you get the orange one, I think that's a cellulose, but if you get the other one, it's 100% cotton. And at wet paint, it's like only a buck or two more. Might as well get the cotton, and if you don't draw on it, you can use it for bed sheets. Or just, just to make a quilt and uh, you know cover up with it. I do. I'm not gonna lie. I love paper. So, oh yeah. yeah you know, you can't <laughs> yeah. have enough. There's several people in this community, in the wet paint, I'll call it the wet paint art community, who have, who literally have an art supply annex. 
So like, if, if Darren ever runs out of a particular item, he just calls me and says, Marty, can I get uh, six cases of that? Beer? I'm right over. I'll load the truck up and bring it back to you, Darren. It, there might be a little bit more cost, but it's coming back. Yeah, exactly. But, but there are several people around here who just collect art so supplies, and you know, and because I review them, I used to spend a lot. Now companies are they're nice. They do send me sometimes an art supply, but a lot of times, Steve, I say no. I'd rather buy it because then I don't mm -hmm. owe them anything. Yeah. You know? Right. And uh, it's completely yeah. independent. That's right. You know? That's right. If I get the sense that they're, you know, I'll get the emails like, "Hey, we'd love to have you give a favorable review to our new brush." Yeah. I'm like, well, how about if I just buy the brush and I'll, I'll review it, and I, if I like it, I'll. Say. And almost overwhelmingly, I mean, you know, the world is like this. If you're going to try to make something and, and do a good job in it, I'm probably going to like it. You know, I mean, they made the effort. Oh, and they try to. They, I mean, I get <laughs> offers four, five, six times a week. You know, please review this. Please review that. Yeah, do yeah. this. Do that. Look at this. That's like, if I'm not interested in it, if I don't think it's going to be something I like, I do not put it on my channel. So, just was, so you'll know. I was half tempted to leave this out of conversation, Steve, but one time uh, I was talking to Steve and I said, we're it's a little noisy there, Steve. Where are you? He said, well, I'm in my garage. It's, I got a little workshop in here. I said, well, oh, what, yeah. what are you up to, Steve? Oh, yeah. He says, well, I'm turning pens. <laughs> I'm turning a, a, a dip pen. Lathe. Oh, on the lathe. Wood lathe. Wood lathe. Wood lathe turning pen. I said, that's fantastic. Will you send me one? He goes, yes, $4 million. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been making payments ever since. And, <laughs> but he did send me one, and it's beautiful, and yeah. I keep it. It's, it's really nice. It's one of those things I'm afraid to use. <laughs> no, don't be. Where's that fearless Marty? Yeah, right not, not when it comes to stuff you send. Yeah. Me. yeah you know, I keep it. Do you like making color mixing yeah. charts or just I don't. diving I into I don't. something like that? I, I love to see Turn it on late. But I don't no. make them. I'm not any really good at it. I get it get it all going and I get the brush and then I freeze. You mean you're you're there's what a, what paralyzes you? What holds you? There's a fear going on. There. You're welcome. There's a fear to yeah, I to touch this. I yeah I, I think so too. And I and what, I used to do a lot more. With, like one day I was using ballpoint rather than a, a pencil. And I thought, well, I'm really going to screw this up. And I thought to myself, ah, no one's going to care. I can throw it away. I'm not even a footnote in history. Who gives a sh if I mess up the paper? You, you, you've so, got to. Now yeah. I'm just like, ah, forget it. You've got to give yourself myself. permission to fail. You, you just have to. If you don't, you, you know, you just won't push yourself into those learning experiences. And failure really ought to be redefined as discovery, because you got to look at what your, you know, it's like Edison said he learned all these. That hundred ways not to make a light bulb. Well, you know, learn the things you do want to do and don't want to do. Yeah. Think of it as a learning experience. Not, I've got to come out of this with a great painting. Because if that's all you ever do, that a lot of times is the peril. I'm not saying it's yours, but that will paralyze you because you're afraid of messing it up. You know, you've got to do, an, even if you want to do like two separate groups of work, you know, you've got to have a set of work that you give yourself permission to just do whatever and let it fail and then learn the lessons of what it was you did. So, I, I, it reminds me of this, I'm probably going to mess this up, but I, I paraphrase this. Probably, you're an art historian, Darren, you'll probably figure this out, but uh, I think Picasso said this. He said he spent like many years learning to paint and the rest of his life learning to be a child of you know, like, like forget all the rules and just be a kid. Whatever gave you joy when you were seven years old and, you know, you had fun with drawing, whatever that was, that seems like that's what you have to get back to, isn't it, Steve? Yep, I think so. Yeah. I, don't, I go out, I draw really terrible things and paint really terrible stuff, and little kids come up and they're absolutely astounded and amazed. It looks like magic to them. And, and if I can just amaze a six-year-old, I'm good. I'm good. Now, Steve walks up and looks at my work, I expect a full critique. <laughs> but, but when the kids come up and they're like, oh, how did you draw that D giraffe? And I'm like, 
That's a cat, kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a cat. <laughs> but, but, which reminds me of the pet portrait <laughs> party that takes place every year here. There was one last week. Uh, we had a good showing for that. I wasn't able to attend this year, but I've attended like a lot of years in the past. People will bring their pets up for a good cause. All the money goes, right, Virginia? Where does the money go? To people and pets together. People and pets together. It's a really fun event. People bring their pets up, and you have like 10 minutes to draw a portrait of your pet. And it's amazing the expectations that people have range from you could hand them a stick figure and they'd be happy, and then I could hand them an exact replica of their uh, cat and they'd be like, where's my stick figure? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it just depends on what you have. But I like yeah. to draw the people and the pets. Virginia, I don't know if you know this, but I've been sketching the people with the pet at the same time. And I think trying to capture their likeness is fun. But as, as Steve said, like, Give yourself permission to, yeah. to fail. Take yeah. what, even if that's like a spiral notebook or something. Yeah. You know, just get in there and scribble. You do that. I sometimes yep. Yep. when you leaf through in the video to mm -hmm. get to the work that you're going to demonstrate, mm -hmm. I catch little glimpses of your sketches. You know, in there. And stuff. And I'll yeah. pause the video and I'll say, I wonder, I wonder what took Steve. I wonder how Steve did that. Or what. Yeah. And then, and then I call you, and then a two-hour conversation. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. You gotta just let go, I think, right? Yeah, and if you don't want anybody to see it, then if that's the way you talk yourself into doing stuff that gives you permission to fail, then just set aside a folder where you do stuff, stick it in that folder and nobody ever sees it. But it's important, you know, that you do work, that you just, there are no holes barred, <clears throat> just do it, you know. Whatever that idea is you had that makes you afraid, just try it. See what happens. Do any does anybody in the room are they content creators on YouTube or Instagram? Do you guys post? Or are you just consumers of the content? Mostly just consumers? Consumers? Well if you ever go to start your own channel or you just want to do that and you think it's a little daunting because of the technology, uh, take it from a couple of old timers, it's not that hard. Uh, it's good that you're a little bit familiar with technology, but it really isn't that hard to start a YouTube channel or an Instagram where you can post your work occasionally. And listen, the first time somebody like Steve follows your Instagram channel, you, 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 you go and tell all your family and relatives. I did that. I just called everybody up and said, Steve Mitchell's following my Instagram. <laughs> Which is fun. Uh, but the point is, if you want to create content or show your content or you're fearful about what how your content will be received, you know, like on the internet. Uh, Steve and I like I was, I was saying, uh, thank God there's always someone worse. <laughs> uh, because uh, we do a lot of, I, I in particular just throw mostly anything out. You know, yeah. and then people say, well, uh, two drawings ago it was much better than this one. And I'm, I appreciate the, the honesty, but also uh, uh, it's good, it's good to, you know, just just share what you do yeah, you know, if, you're, yeah. if you're interested. So Instagram, it's um, Steve Mitchell. Uh, it's my watercolor on Instagram also, yeah. Instagram. Yeah. And a um, uh, quick plug for one thing, and then uh, and then oh, I think we got a break. Uh, I have some buttons here which I'd like to give out. They're for the St. Paul Underground Artist League. It's not as dangerous as it sounds, <laughs> and uh, we're just a bunch of mild-mannered uh, artists who live all over. Steve's a member. Uh, I'm not going to say whether he's in good standing or not, but <laughs> he's a member. But we gather uh, on a Zoom call every Sunday, and not Steve because uh, he's busy sometimes on that at that time. But we, over the pandemic, we've been gathering with artists, and instead we. You know, uh, before that pandemic, we'd been meeting all over St. Paul. We'd go out to the zoo and sketch and some different things. So it's on Facebook. At, uh, it's not hard to forget St. Paul Underground Artist League. It's a long name. We couldn't get T-shirts because we ran out of letters. But <laughs> we got some buttons, and I'll hand those out. And uh, you guys can have those and look us up. And also look up Steve's YouTube channel if you're not already. Probably everybody here is a subscriber. But, uh, you haven't done that, and I don't want to I really appreciate y'all coming out. This means a lot. Because I, I, I spent most of my time staring into a camera lens. So <laughs> it's, it's great to look at the faces. And, 
talk to you people. It really is very, very nice. Thank you for coming. And Minnesota is awesome. Thank you. Do you like it? Yeah. Well, I'm glad, you could come. Yeah, I'm glad you guys made the trip up here and you brought your lovely wife. Yeah.